We're here for you for the holidays. Holiday spending stays strong. Kindle Fire races up the charts. Samsung Small Victory and Xbox Upgrades. I'm Kelly Mosca, Web Marketing Coordinator with Petra, and it's time for the Petra 5 and 5. Take a seat, grab a mug of cocoa, and settle in for the five hottest stories of the week. Don't forget the marshmallows. Petra is here for you through the holiday season. That's right, the holidays are approaching and we're sticking by you through your busiest season with our 2011 holiday hours. Petra sales team will be on hand from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next two Saturdays, December 10th and 17th. And don't forget to check out our weekly web specials on the Petra homepage. They're the hottest electronics products and deals to help boost your holiday margins. Sure, Cyber Monday web sales topped $1.25 billion, making it the heaviest online spending day in history. But if you think consumers ticked everything off their shopping list that day, think again. The holiday shopping season isn't slowing down now. Demand for tablet computers, touchscreen phones, and e-readers are projected to help drive a 6.8% increase in CE sales this holiday season to nearly $7 billion. According to research firm Ibis World, CE will be the second largest revenue generator for retailers during the November 1st to December 25th period, falling only behind clothing. A boost in consumer confidence could have something to do with the record numbers. In November, confidence leapt nearly 15 points from October from 40.9 to 56, said Lynn Franco, director of the Conference Board Consumer Research Center, quote, Consumers' assessment of current conditions finally improved after six months of steady decline. Consumers' apprehension regarding the short-term outlook for business condition, job and income prospects eased considerably. Consumers appear to be entering the holiday season in better spirits, end quote. It'll be a holly jolly Christmas. The Kindle Fire may be the new kid on the block, but much like the 80s boy band sensation, it's racing to the top of the charts, becoming the true iPad rival. Just two weeks after it began shipping, the Fire's become the second best-selling media tablet worldwide in the fourth quarter, falling behind only the iPad. Research firm IHS estimates that Amazon will ship 3.9 million Fire units in the last three months of 2011, making it second in market share behind, you guessed it, Apple's iPad. With media tablet shipments expected to reach 64.7 million units this year, up from the previous forecast of 60 million units, Amazon tablets will make up a 13.8% share of tablet shipments in the quarter, pushing past Samsung's 4.8%, but falling far below the iPad's 65.6% share. Now, obviously the fire isn't knocking Apple off the throne anytime soon, but it is a cause of concern to other Android-powered tablets, including the Samsung Galaxy Tab, said Rhonda Alexander, Senior Manager of Tablet and Monitor Research for IHS. Quote, Most other Android tablet makers must earn a profit based on hardware sales alone. In contrast, Amazon plans to use the Kindle Fire to drive sales of physical goods that comprise the majority of the company's business. End quote. With that strategy in mind, Amazon can afford to take a loss on hardware where other Android competitors just can't. As the Apple vs. Samsung international court battle rages on, Samsung had a small triumph stateside with a California judge refusing Apple's request for an injunction to ban the sale of Samsung Galaxy smartphone and tablet products in the U.S. United States District Judge Lucy Coe in San Jose, California denied Apple's request, writing that, quote, it is not clear that an injunction on Samsung's accused devices would prevent Apple from being irreparably harmed, end quote. An Apple spokeswoman said that Samsung's, quote, blatant copying is wrong, while Samsung spokesman Jason Kim said Samsung welcomes Coe's opinion, saying, quote, this ruling confirms our long-held view that Apple's arguments lack merit, end quote. This by no means ends the battle in America, and other Apple patent lawsuits against Samsung continue in other countries. Microsoft has announced a major upgrade to the Xbox 360 and Xbox Live, adding a huge amount of content from several major providers, including Bravo, Comcast, ESPN, HBO Go, Verizon Fios, Sci-Fi, and others, as well as the addition of voice controls and gesture controls. Pitting the 360 head-to-head -head with the set-top cable box, this will allow Xbox Live users to access a variety of mainstream television programming from their console, as well as to ditch the remote and search using voice commands and hand gestures, if they have the Kinect peripheral. So there's the cool, look what I can do factor involved. But before you lose your cable box, there are some things to consider. By avoiding the box, users won't be able to skirt the pay television packages. They'll still need to pay the cable providers to get access through the Xbox, and then pay the roughly $60 per year for a premier membership to Xbox Live. But on the upside, it will integrate and streamline the user experience in a way that the traditional set-top boxes haven't been able to keep up with. Also for now, the TV apps on the Xbox won't fully replace traditional options. Comcast is only offering on-demand videos, not live channels, and the Fios TV app will only have 26 channels at the onset, a fraction of the hundreds available through traditional cable. This is due to the fact, said Joseph Ambolt, a director of product management at Verizon, that, quote, content rights 
are explicit. If an existing contract with the channels doesn't say you can put the content on an Xbox, then you have to go secure these additional rights." End quote. So weigh your options carefully. That's your Petra 5 and 5. Have a great week and we'll catch up with you next time for more hot industry news.